You know, so much of this art, I remember where I was at different points in the last 10 years and that's where this body of work comes from. It's, it's kind of, you know, what I've done in the last 10 years. It's some of my first earliest paintings and I was never, you know, trained formally in school to paint or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to get out there and just kind of do it and just I thought maybe I could emulate, you know, what some of the other great artists have done in time. And I really just kind of just paint from my heart. I don't really often go in with uh, a total 100% idea of what I want. Sometimes I sit there and I pick out my colors and I think, oh, I'd like to do a painting with these colors and, you know, some having some balance of color. And I think when you do this kind of work, and I think what Jackson Pollock did maybe instinctively, was you're looking for a balance and almost negative space within the piece and not to make it too over, uh, you know, the colors where they're murky, you want them crisp, and you want to feel balanced. I think that's maybe something as we do as humans is we just kind of look at something instinctively and we just feel like it's right. We don't maybe know why it's right, but we just kind of look at it from thousands of years of evolution. And, you know, beauty is something that we should probably be looking at when we're buying a piece of art instead of something that's trendy. When I paint, it's kind of like I'm, I'm there, but I'm not there. I, I go in with an I possible idea, but it's not fully formed yet. It takes time to kind of look at the work and, and feel the colors and, and, and decide what kind of mood you're in. I, mean, I assume every painting in here is a different mood I was in when I painted it. I mean, it's never the same. I can think of when I look at some of these paintings that uh, where I was, where I painted them, maybe what I've, I was even thinking when that happened. I can think of being in Florida and, and, and painting this painting up here. And, uh, you know, I, I remember uh, the painting I'm looking at across on the other wall there. Like, uh, I had paint everywhere and I wasn't in a proper studio and I was in this uh, uh, billionaire's house on the ocean front in uh, the Florida Keys and I was painting in his garage and I was trying not to make a mess and uh, I remember looking at my shins after it was done and they were just absolutely covered in paint and I just I kind of almost lose myself sometimes when I go into the painting I just get lost and that's why I think I really like painting is because it almost just completely lets me forget about everything and I just kind of go there and it's almost very peaceful yeah, so this is, uh, I guess, kind of the uh, the star of the show, and one of the reasons that it's the star of the show is because of this uh, this frame that uh, is all the way around it, and what you have here is uh, a solid uh, wood ash frame. And my idea was when I did this was I wanted a contemporary painting of vibrant colors, and then I wanted it mixed with kind of almost a, a contemporary, uh, not a contemporary frame, a, a classic frame from yesteryear because when you go into all the great museums of the world, what do you see? You see uh, a beautiful uh, gold leaf gilded frame around these masterworks. And that was just kind of the thought I was thinking of. I, I hand made this, uh, this frame in my workshop as well after I had uh, painted it. And I hand cut every single one of these little pieces and sanded them one by one by one and, 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 and took time to figure out the layout so they evenly balanced, you know, all the way they went along. I didn't have, I, I just kind of wanted to make something that I thought was very interesting. And, you know, I finished off with this uh, very special gilding paint that uh, you can order from France. It's, uh, it's very expensive. And I remember starting this out, I just love this vibrant red in the background and there's kind of like a few hidden objects in this. There's a square here. There's a, a star here that you probably would never ever notice anywhere else. There's a, an X and I, I think I made a circle over here and there's an equal sign. And uh, there was a few other symbols and a line hidden here, but no one would ever notice that because uh, it's almost impossible to see. But I remember I was just fooling around and just uh, having a good time while I was painting. And that's what I like to do when I paint. I like to just get out there and just uh, feel good about what I'm painting and hopefully I produce a, you know, a beautiful painting and, and people like it. There are artists that specialize in making functional art and specialized furniture that is above and beyond. And what we have here is a flute sofa, which I've made a number of times. This one is, uh, happens to be one of the very first ones I've ever made. It's uh, covered in a, in a silk uh, crushed red velvet. And it's uh, an original design that I came up with and um, it's been sold to uh, clients in New York. A uh, very famous designer bought two of them for 
uh, an 80,000 square foot penthouse on the ocean in Palm Beach, which I was very proud to put them there. I mean, this house was just over the top. And uh, it's uh, uh, something that I spend a tremendous amount of time on, come up with uh, original ideas uh, that are not mass produced. They are sometimes one-offs, often, or they are limited edition series that maybe have one to eight pieces. Um, and you can also find me at uh, Troy Smith Studio. Uh, that's my Instagram handle. And you can also find uh, my website under the same name where you'll see all my artwork, all my uh, furniture, my functional art, and uh, some of the other uh, large-scale um, sculptures that I've installed in Zurich, Switzerland, and just kind of learn a little bit about me with my bio. And uh, check me out.